Today I'm going to teach you to paint two flowers. There's a very dark burgundy one and then there's a bright but fairly light red one. The thing that makes these flowers extra interesting is that they are in the full sun and so there's lots of dark shadows and brighter spots that are much lighter than what you would expect for the color of the flower. I'm starting out with my lights, the pinks, and I'm not just putting down this pinky purple, but some of the pinks I'm going to use are going to be a slightly different shade of pink. All of my pinks are lightened with water. You don't mix white with paint to make light colors with watercolor. This is a big adjustment if you've been doing a lot of acrylic or oil painting. You mix water with paint to make light colors happen. So all of these were done with light colors. And now I'm going to go into some of the darker colors and the middle colors. I check the color up at the corner of the paper just to see how dark it is. If it gets too much of a puddle, I blot it up with a tissue. This, these colors are alizarin, crimson, quinacridone, magenta, and a little bit of Payne's gray for some of it. I, in another section I have a mixture that is this color right here and it is uh, alizarin crimson, quinacridone magenta, and quinacridone rose and occasionally a little bit of red. Pyrrole red is the red I use. So now I'm doing some of the middle colors. These, this color is has got a lot more magenta in it. When you see that really bright purpley look in there, you know that I'm using magenta right there. And this petal has actually a little bit of orange in it, so I've added some gamboge to it to make it uh, oranger. I believe it's because of the reflection of the flower above it that it has orange in it, because certainly isn't any orange in the flower. I try to keep moving with my brush and keep it wet, damp, as I move along so that the colors blend with each other and go from dark to light smoothly without sharp edges in the middle of a petal. Unless, of course, there's a shadow, which sometimes happens, and then they make sharp edges, and we will try to put them in. This next little part is a sharp shadow that is under the red flower. Now you'll notice that I have my finger on the left on my reference photo. And I'm doing that because this is such a complicated um, reference photo. There's so much in that little flower and so much of it is just abstract. And it's really easy to lose your place. And so that's why I do keep a marker using my finger. I also, I do this on a lot of complicated pictures. It just makes it easier. Uh, here are some mid-tones. They're, they're light, but not quite as light as those really pale parts. And uh, you might notice that I switch colors in the middle of a petal. Now you wouldn't have to do that. If, you're, if you haven't painted a lot and you want to do something this complicated, then you don't have to switch from a peachy pink to a purpley pink. You can just choose pink and add the darker shades to make it dark. And it'll still be pretty. It won't it'd be quite as much like nature, but it's a good place to start. I'm putting in more shadows under here. Look how dark that is under there. It looks like I've added quite a bit of Payne's Gray to that patch of paint in order to make it go. And I'm having some sharp edges there to make the shadows happen. So I've moved on to the next petal so that those sharp edges can dry before I come back to it so that they stay sharp. That's why I move around so much, is so that the different parts that I'm working on can dry before I move on to a new part. I have little squares that I use. I use them to isolate colors, but I also use them to check values 
and that there's a whole video about them and I'll put the link in the references. So now I'm just painting that whole thing pink just to make it easier rather than painting the little individual parts. And when it's dry, I'll come back and put in the detail. Now there I go with that petal, and the shadow stayed there because it was already dry. This kind of detailed painting is more time consuming and some of you may prefer to do a more impressionistic view of it and uh, leave out some of this detail, but this was a commission and they wanted detail and I happen to love detail so I enjoyed doing this even though I do lots of paintings that are not as detailed as well. Many of you have been thinking about what your style is and I just don't think it's worth stressing about that, especially when you're a beginner, because your style is developing. And as you paint and try different things, your style will emerge from that. And sometimes two styles. I know several artists that have more than one style. So now I'm putting in the darks into this section, and they're quite dark, and then when they're dry, I'll go back in and put in the medium tones, which is what I'm doing now. So that paint wasn't as drippy wet, and it dried fairly quickly. So and then this is what is getting all the little petal look in there, in that part. One of the complications of doing pinks is that the paper is not quite white, and so the, the color of your paint changes just a little bit. In the end, the color doesn't matter nearly as much as whether you have your values right. And there might be a color that you just really want because you love that color, but as far as your overall painting goes, it really won't matter. If you have your values right, your painting will look great. This goes whether you have a loose painting or a very tight to detailed painting like this one. Either way, if you get your values right, the painting will work. Back to my thought on style. So Stan Miller does portraits that have a lot of color in them. They have funny colors in them for a face and then on the other hand and he's known for his portraits on the other hand he does these very detailed realistic intricate sceneries and he's also known for them so he has two different looks they're both his style and he's known for both of them I have emerged with two styles over the years I have this one where it's very tight You may have seen my glowing candle. That one is much looser. So here I'm getting a lot of the darks in. The colors that I'm using in these reds and darks are already mixed into different piles. I have I have a pile with a Lizrum crimson and Cornacridone magenta. I have a pile of magenta and Cornacridone rose. And then I have a pile with the Elizrum and Payne's gray. And a pile, and some of that might have some magenta too. So there's these little piles on my palette already mixed. So I'm going back into that paint, often rinsing my brush in between and drying it on my sponge, but going back to those piles without having to try to remix every little bit of paint here that I'm using with all these variances of color.
this reference photo is a little bit blurred. And so that makes some complications as far as of making it accurate. And so there are some places where I actually made petals pop a little bit more than they did in the reference photo. And that's because I couldn't see exactly what was happening in the reference photo. Another thing that I do is I often turn my photo. I turn my photo so that whatever feels comfortable to my hand for painting with the greatest accuracy, that's the direction my photo should be. And then I change my reference photo too because I'm not very good at uh, turning things upside down in my mind as I'm painting, especially when I'm trying to explain what I'm doing at the same time. This part of the flower is kind of fun because it's all these bright magenta and even some bright red, but lots of alizarum in there. If you decide to paint dahlias, I recommend that you get a good sharp picture and that you try one first, especially if you're a beginner, that is much closer up than this so that your detail isn't so tiny so that you're working in a bigger area with all that little detail stuff. Normally when you're painting they say to get your lights on first and then your darks, then your mid-tones and then your darks and that's really good advice. The next flower I do that much more but this one I couldn't figure out where those tones all were because of how complex it is and how blurred the picture was and so I just have done a little bit at a time. Look how dark that gets in there between those. Somebody recently asked me how they figure out what their style is. And I recommend that beginners try a lot of things and let their style emerge and don't really stress over it. People that stress over it often stop painting because they're so worried about what style they should be painting. Just paint and let it come to you. And now I'm putting more detail in and more shadows. See how those petals pop front when a shadow goes behind them. Some of these I'm just making darker because as I painted, I realized I had them too light. It's very easy to do when you're painting against a white background or with a white background all around. You've probably noticed that one white petal down there. And I'll get to it. I won't leave it like that. It definitely is kind of out of place. Just a little bit more detail with some mid-tones. And then finally I fix that. The best thing you can do at this point is stand back and walk around maybe and look at it and you'll see stuff that you didn't see otherwise. This flower is a red flower, but it's a light red. And so I've taken my little squares and moved it around over the flower to see what colors I should get. And I've chosen Pyro Red, Alizarum Crimson, um, Quinacridone Pink, and I'm not sure what the fourth one was. Oh, Pyro, Scarlet Pyro was the fourth one. I'm starting that center part with just a pink that's slightly uh, it's a it's a straight pink it's not a peachy pink and then on this part I've added a little bit of the scarlet pyro and made it slightly peachier now if you use any scarlet pyro you have to be really careful with it it is such a vibrant color that it takes a lot of water to water it down to the place where it's a pastel 
I'm just filling in all of the background petals with these colors. And I do get them lighter in some places and darker in some places, but basically I'm mostly filling in the light color. In order to have shadows and the, the feeling of sunlight hitting something, you have to have lights, light areas. And you also have to have some distinct lines. So now I'm going in with my midtones and I'm using the squares to see if I have those colors right. Now the edge of this flower might look funny to you on the left side, and that's because I used a different drawing. I actually put a whole bunch of different drawings together to make this for different photo references. And I used this flower from this one, but the flower that's on the left, I used a different view of it that suited my purpose better. I've got the midtones in that part, and now I'm moving on to put midtones in this part. The midtones is made from quinacridone rose and scarlet pyrrole. No, sorry, quinacridone rose and pyrrole red. It's very watered down, and then in those parts where it's a little bit darker, it's just a little bit less watered down. On this part, I'm adding the medium tones, but I'm just not adding straight medium tones. As you can see, I'm blending it so that some areas are lighter and some areas are darker. There's a pretty cool story behind this painting. The man that commissioned me to do it came from a family that raised dahlias, and they have had some of these dahlias in their family for 200 years. It's quite astonishing. I don't know who the person in the next generation is going to be that's going to take it over, but I sure hope somebody steps up and does. It's a lot of work to do dahlias because in the north where these grow, you have to dig them up every winter. I had the privilege of going to his gardens and taking photos and it was just gorgeous. You might notice me changing brushes from time to time. And usually that's because I want one with a better point. Sometimes I'll want one that holds a little bit more water. Again, I'm holding my finger on my reference photo because I lose my place if I don't. It takes a lot of the stress out of painting if you can all automatically go back to a certain spot without having to search for it each time. These two flowers took nearly uh, two hours to paint. So you can see that they are very detailed. If you've enjoyed this video so far, I would love to hear from you and have you share it with a friend or subscribe.
more midtones. Now you can see that the midtones that I'm putting in, they are all midtones, but they're not all the same as each other. I have some of them darker and some of them lighter. So I'm doing some of the shading with the midtones, whereas the light tone pretty much just put it all over. And I didn't really do shading with it. If you're interested in painting some flowers in these colors, you can find everything that I used for this project in the comments. And now I'm going to put in the darker tones. I probably will make some of them darker than what shows on that flower because, yep, see that's, well, well that is pretty dark on the painting too, but because the, the photo was a little bit blurred, but it was the one that had those two flowers that I wanted in the painting. And my really crisp photos didn't have, they had other flowers in the arrangement instead of those two. So as you put these darker areas in, it becomes more 3D looking. And it changes everything. A lot of times the darkest color in a painting isn't even very pretty. And sometimes we hesitate to put it because we see this pretty pink flower or this pretty red flower. And we don't really want to have a brownish, burgundyish color in it because it seems like the wrong color. But without those darker colors, you don't see the beauty of the lighter colors and the flowers will look flat. What is the most complicated flower that you have ever painted? I would love to hear from you in the comments what you've painted that is very complicated and detailed. I have painted some roses that were pretty complicated, but they weren't as tiny as these little petals. And because of that, I was able to put more nuances into them. Let's see how the petals are getting separated by the details that's being added, by the darks. And it's suddenly not looking so flat anymore. You can see those petals just popping forward as they get color, shadows. Things that didn't even show before.
And now I'm getting some even darker tones in there. And it will make it look more 3D than it does. It's very hard to see all the little petals in that, that part. If I ever paint another dolly, I would like to have a better photo reference. And there we have it.